All right, here we go. Um, so we're going to talk about mechanisms of speciation, how we can get different species, what has to happen. And basically, what has to happen is that we need to get um, reproductive barriers established. Okay, um, we need to prevent interbreeding and maintain reproductive isolation. And so we are going to go through these um, things called isolating mechanisms, way to prevent um, reproduction between populations, and then they will become new species. Um, and again, natural selection favors traits that prevent reproduction across species boundaries. We um, we want nature wants a species to remain a species and not to um, be join with another species because nature likes more diversity. So we always want to be more diverse. So we're always going to try to maintain species boundaries. So any so natural selection is always going to favor something that prevents reproduction across species boundaries. Okay. Um, so let's look, here is our table of mechanisms of reproductive isolation, okay? And we're going to look at different ones. We're going to use, I don't like to use pre-mating. We're going to use these ones here are pre-zygotic. Um, they happen before a zygote is made. And these ones are actually, this one is also pre-zygotic. These two here, let's erase that. So this group boop, are pre-zygotic, pre and these two down here are post-zygotic after a zygote has been made. Okay, so here we go. So first we're going to look at pre-zygotic mechanisms. So um, mechanisms that prevent mating or, pre if there is mating occur, prevent the gametes from fertilizing each other. Okay. Um, reproductive isolation occurs by a wide variety of mechanisms. Um, again, prevent mating attempts, um, and these are pre-zygotic mating. Okay, uh, the first one is geographic isolation. Um, it prevents interbreeding be uh, between populations because they're just not anywhere near each other. Um, they live in different physically separated places, so they can't interbreed because they're nowhere near each other. Um, and this one is probably the easiest way. Um, to uh, allow a new species to form, okay? Um, and rather than to maintain um, reproductive isolation, okay? And here, look, here's the uh, the kebab squirrel and the Albert squirrel, and they just they just live in totally different areas. So even though they they're both cute and they both have these cute little little standy up ears, oh, he's so cute and fuzzy. All right, number two is habitat isolation. Species don't mate because they occupy different habitats. White crowned sparrows inhabit fields and meadows, and white throated sparrows inhabit dense thickets. Okay, so they just don't, they're not in the same area, so they wouldn't be encountering each other to breed. Uh, another example is an example of the fig wasp, um, and they breed on the fruit of different species of fig. So because, you know, one wasp will breed on only one kind of fig and then the other wasp will breed only on another kind of fig, they just don't interact because of where they choose to breed. Look, a fig wasp. All right, number three is temporal isolation. So isolation based on time, whether it's time of day, time of year, year span, whatever, okay? Um, it prevents breeding between two species occupying the same habitat because of different breeding seasons, okay? Um, so either breeding uh, different times of day, some, some animals are nocturnal, some animals are diurnal, um, or different breeding seasons, okay? There's a spring field cricket and a fall field cricket, and they both happen in the same area of North America, but they don't interbreed because they have different breeding seasons, okay? Uh, same thing with the bishop pines versus Monterey pines. Okay, bishop pine pollination is in the summer. Monterey pine pollination is, occurs in early spring, so they don't have the same breed, the same um, uh, pollen seasons. Okay, there's a bishop pine, and there's a Monterey pine. Um, different species also have different courtship rituals. What am I on? Four, 
four um, is behavioral isolation. So animals, a lot of animals have elaborate courtship colors and courtship behaviors. Um, you've got the dance of the blue-footed boobies, right? Show me your feet, show me your feet, show me your feet. Um, if they dance for some other species, it, they're not going to recognize it as a mating dance. Um, you can also have fancy plumage uh, like that of the peacock or of the um, Rajiana bird of paradise uh, that we're going to look at in a minute. Um, there, it's very conspicuous and very particular to that species. So um, it's little chance that a female of another species is going to mate with him by mistake. And see, there's, oh my God, look at that plumage. That's impressive right there. Uh, all right. Um, what am I on? Five. Um, mechanical isolation and mechanical incompatibility. Um, sometimes sexual organs uh, can also foil mating attempts if they just don't fit together. Okay, so male and female sexual organs may not fit together. Um, there may be incompatible body shapes that make um, uh, copulation between species impossible. Again, we talked about the snails. Um, you can't have snails with different spiral shells mate um, because their reproductive parts are not in the right position on their heads. So you have to mate with snails who are the same spiral shape. Okay, so again, reproductive stru structures can be incompatible and that leads to mechanical isolation. Okay, and the last one, I don't know why I'm having such a problem remembering this. Number six is gamete incompatibility. And basically, again, we still haven't formed a zygote, so this is all pre-zygotic. Um, so sperm from one species just can't fertilize eggs in another species, okay? Um, and uh, this, we mentioned the sea urchin sperm cells contain a protein that allows them only to bind to sea urchin eggs. They can't fertilize any other um, egg. Okay. So the gametes cannot form a zygote. Okay. So that's it for prezygotic. So now, if somehow the gametes can get together and do form a zygote, a zygote now we're going to go on to post zygotic mechanisms that can isolate. Um, and limit hybrid offspring, okay? Um, so again, mechanisms that prevent the formation of viable fertile offspring um, between species are called post-zygotic isolating mechanisms. So we're gonna look at a couple of those. Um, one is hybrid inviability. And so you may get species uh, that cross fertilize, but the hybrid may be unable to survive. It could be that the genetic instructions um, may be so different that the hybrids abort early in development, okay? Or the hybrid may die shortly after birth. It may not be formed correctly, okay? Um, and the hybrid may not be able to reproduce because it displays behaviors that are mixture of the two parental types. And it, it's not quite one, it's not quite the other, it's something in between. But because it's not recognizable to either species, it can't um, uh, mate. So again, uh, there's some lovebird hybrids that have um, that can't learn how to carry nest materials during flight, and if they can't build a nest, they can't have a place for their eggs, so they can't reproduce. Okay. Um, second type of postzygotic um, isolation mechanism is hybrid infertility. Um, and this is when you have a hybrid offspring and it's certainly viable, it's alive and lives long enough, but it's um, sterile, okay? So we have ligers, um, we talked about those, they're very cool, um, cross between a male lion and a female tiger, um, and they are all sterile. So, and a lot of times the sterility or the infertility is caused by the failure of chromosomes to pair properly during meiosis, so eggs and sperm don't develop, okay? Um, and, oh, there we have a, a little liger. Hello! And that's it. The end. And those are our um, mechanisms of speciation.